Hi, I'm Anna, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel, where we explore folklore, mythology, myths, legends, and fairy tales every week. And if you're a returning subscriber, as always, welcome back. Today we're going to look into an interesting, but not very well-known, Norwegian creature known as the Kvarnknur, or Kvarnknuren. Let's get started. Now, the name Kvarnknur is actually a compound word, which are very common in the Norwegian language. The first part, Kvarn, means mill, and is usually used when talking about a water mill. The second part, Knur, means growl or grunt. So, a literal translation of the name into English would mean something like the watermill growler or the watermill grunter. This is because the creature is known to inhabit watermills. And he's also known for his terrible grunting or growling that comes from beneath the watermill, usually at night. If the mill wasn't working properly, if it often got stuck, or even if the grains yielded little flour, it was often blamed on the kvarnknur, who was holding the water wheel outside, or somehow otherwise interfering with the mill. Those who have been unfortunate enough to have set eyes upon a kvarnknur tell that they're quite short in stature, but they have very long arms. They use their arms to sometimes bank on the bottom of the millhouse if they're displeased with the person inside. But they're best known for living in the water around the millhouse and around especially the wheel. With their long arms, they'll often hold around or onto the wheel and stop it from turning, interfering with whoever's milling inside. But perhaps the most notable feature of the Kvarnknur is their large gaping mouths. It's said that when one of them opens their mouth, it's as big as a doorway from the top to the bottom. And sometimes, instead of using their arms to hold the water wheel, they'll bite down into it or around it and stop the water wheel from turning and interfere with the mill. The Kvarnknur is thought to be quite small in stature, but very broad and strong and muscular. For they must be very strong to be able to stop a large water wheel from turning. The Kvarnknur was not necessarily thought of as an evil being. In fact, if you had his favour, it was said that he would make sure that the water wheel was always working properly, and you would always come away from the mill house with plenty of wonderful fine flour yielded from your grains. However, if you got on his bad side, then he would do the opposite and interfere and make sure that your flower wasn't up to par. There were a number of ways that you could gain his favour. One folk belief was that you should always throw a pinch or sprinkle of the first flower that you milled out into the water by the wheel where the Kvarnknur lived. If you failed to do this, he wouldn't be happy at all. He was also known to be fond of Fenelur, which is a traditional Norwegian meat, a type of dried and salted lamb leg. And he also had a taste for Norwegian Christmas beer. It was said that a bit of dried meat and Christmas beer was all it would take for you to have good flour every time that you milled. There's a story of a kvarnknur documented in Hexer og Troll by Åse Moe and Hjelrun Fosmark, titled The Kvarnknur in Rudior. Rudior in Dovre has long been known as a good mill with a stable water stream, but it was known better still for the Kvarnknur that lived there. 
One time there was a man named Orla who wanted to use the mill. But the farmer told him that he should wait as it was Thursday evening and all know that the whites and magical creatures are most active on this night. But as the farmer was going to use the mill the next day, Orla didn't want to wait so long. So he went to the mill that evening and milled his grains to flour. After the first batch was done, he thought not to sprinkle any to the Kvarnknud. He did not believe in such children's tales and did not want to waste such good flour. He went about his milling and soon there was a loud knocking that came from beneath the floorboards of the mill house. Orla ignored this warning and he went on with milling his flour. But soon after, the wheels started to slow down and stop and get stuck full of grains. And every time he cleared it, the mill would stop again. And as soon as some of the grains were milled to flour, there came great gusts of wind up through the floorboards and through the windows that blew the freshly milled flour all over the floor. But Orla continued. He did not believe in whites and magical creatures, and this was all surely just bad luck. But the Kvarnknud was not forgiving. In an instant, it seemed as though the whole mill house was grabbed. The wooden walls and floors creaked and groaned. The roof crashed and snapped. And the grinding stone of the mill came all the way out of its fixtures. And Orla's grain and the flour that he had milled spilled everywhere. Then Orla became scared. He raced to the door as fast as he could, just as a piece of wood was falling from the roof. He took one last look at the old mill, and there, to his amazement, he saw the most terrible figure in the doorway, a being with red glowing eyes and a gaping mouth so large that it was as big as the whole door opening itself. In the old days, the milling of flour was a quite important task, and if the grains yielded only a little bit of flour, it could mean a lot of problems for many poorer families throughout history, as flour and grains were a staple during the winter time. Wheat and grains were treated with the utmost respect and were even nicknamed Gudzlona, meaning God's loan or God's gift. And as such, farmers would almost always take off their hats out of respect when they went into the mill to grind their grain. If the grains yielded little flour, or the milling didn't go well, then it meant that many may be without food over the winter. Many times, something called barkebre, or bark bread, or morsebre, moss bread, was made in order to stretch the flour to go further. And it's pretty much what you may imagine. Bark from trees was stripped and dried and then ground down into a powder or sort of bark flour, which was then mixed together with grain flour to make bread. Or in some other cases, moss was used and dried and ground down and also added to bread mixtures. This is primarily found in Scandinavia or the Nordic region and it was an important survival or famine food that was used throughout Scandinavia throughout many centuries of history in order for the people to survive in the very harsh and cold Nordic climate. 
Because grains, milling and flour were so important to the people, this too made the Kvarnknud an important creature in Norwegian folklore, as if milling went badly, which was often blamed on the Kvarnknud. It could be life or death for poorer families. Another story of a Kvarnknud is documented in Asbjørnsen og Moe's Norske Folke Eventyr. In the story Kvarnsagen, it tells that there was once a man who had a mill by a waterfall, but there also lived a Kvarnknud. Whether the man gave him offerings of lefse, a Norwegian traditional flatbread, or Christmas beer, I cannot say, but I suspect not, for every time the man went to grind, the Kvarnknud would hold the mill wheel so that the man could not mill his flour. The man knew well that it was the Kvarnknud that did this, and one evening he got fed up and he went to mill his flour, but took a pot full of pitch and tar with him. When he got there, he lit a fire underneath it and made it boiling hot. When he started the mill, it worked for a while, but soon it began to stop and get stuck as the creature held the wheel outside. He hit and kicked the wheel, trying to get the Kvarnknud off, but it did not work. So he opened the door on the side of the mill house that opened just by the wheel and where the waterfall was. And there he saw the creature standing in the doorway with his huge gaping mouth, as big as the door itself. Have you seen such a large gape? The Kvarnknud asked him. The man grabbed the pot and said, Have you known something so boiling hot? And threw the pot into the creature's gaping mouth. Then the Kvarnknud let go of the mill wheel and let out a terrible roar of pain. And from that day onwards, the mill always worked beautifully, and the creature never interfered when people went to the mill house to grind. Interestingly, some believe that the Kvarnknud may have stemmed from the Norwegian spirit or being found in waterfalls known as the Fossegrim, whereas others say that they're separate beings entirely. The Fossegrim we'll cover in the next video, where we look into a bunch of other water spirits and beings from Norwegian as well as Nordic folklore. But those are some stories for another day. That was today's video on the Norwegian water mill being or spirit known as the Kvarnknud. I hope you enjoyed it. But for now, as always, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! I'd like to take a moment to say a big thank you to the members of the channel, as well as my patrons on Patreon, for supporting my work. Folklore and fairy tales play such a big part in my life, and I love being able to share them here with you. If you're interested in finding out more about channel membership, you can find all the information here, or in the link in the video description. Or you can head over to my Patreon page. You can find the link in the description of this video, or on my YouTube homepage. Thanks for watching, and thanks again to the members of the channel and my patrons for your support. But for now, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.